Welcome to day two of the video log journal of our activities here as we venture deeper into this blockchain space. Really that's a bit of a misnomer. The blockchain space is really central to our activity right now, but it's a part of a larger story that I hope that we'll be able to tell through these video logs and other other avenues, uh, of course, on Twitter and various other places. Anyway, um, just a kind of update from the street here. Um, it's Monday, August 7th, 2017, and um, woke up today, of course, waiting on a wire. I uh, faxed a wire off to the bank on Friday after hours, getting so used to this uh, crypto space, I didn't even realize that you can't move money on the weekends. How bizarre is that? So, Waiting today for that to come through to our account and give us some funds to work with. And um, so it's largely a day of reading and meeting. Um, the first article that kind of came up onto the Radar was from Market Watch, which I'm interpreting and don't know well, but is kind of a mainstream market space uh, kind of publication. And um, one of the questions on the mind of everyone in this community is, um, what does it mean to go go uh, go mainstream? What does it mean for the blockchain to really move into the world and, and really express its value on a larger scale? And not just how ironic and how tragic that um, this article uh, from Market Watch is about Spoofy, who was written, recently written about, I forget where now, it's, it's referenced in the article uh, in the links below, but um, Spoofy is a trader or a group of traders that moves the, the Bitcoin price at will by placing lots of two to 4,000 Bitcoins to buy or sell and either moving that or, or removing it before it can do anything except force the market in one direction or another. Anyway, that and, and the contentious dance between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash really just kind of highlights for me the SEC's comments a week or two ago about paying attention to the space. There's real madness here in this wonderful, evolutionary, cohering, and uh, so just noticing that coming forward. Um, next, I turned over to Forbes um, online. One of the things that came up for me as, you know, kind of present to this ongoing question, I think there was a Google paper that just came out about masculine and feminine and men and women, and this is kind of one of our fundamental polarities that's interesting to tune into and to kind of become more wise about as we move into this latest evolutionary turn. Um, so I'm looking for women in the space of uh, blockchain to, to tune into, and, and I'm glad to say I've found quite a few, but uh, most recently Laura Shin over at Forbes, she's their blockchain specialist, and so really glad for that. She's had some good interviews that I've gotten to listen to, and this article today had to do with... Um, uh, Shapeshift launching Prism, um, well, just kind of a place to keep your uh, blockchain portfolio. And, um, you know, I just, uh, I don't know too much about it. Um, just that it seems like an interesting experiment in the space. And, you know, as I'm personally moving money out of banks and into cryptos, I'm um, curious about how that might look. In other news, uh, um, one of my farther flung friends sent me an article about a fellow who has bots trolling the internet for kind of uh, patterns in language. And um, those patterns seem to suggest that we might be headed for that cyclical market crash that seems to be long overdue in, in the typical market spaces. So. I think the article said something about the collective gestalt has a 
kind of premonitions um, where we start to speak of things in the, in the present tense before they happen. In this case, maybe six to eight weeks prior to a major market crash, apparently these bots are finding more present tense language talking about that. Anyway, for what it's worth. Um, in Laura's article, uh, just to mention, um, a fellow by the name of Olaf, and again, forgive me, his full name will be in the comments below. He's been in the space. He's a young kid that did a, his PhD work on the blockchain as a sociologist um, and is starting a, uh, a hedge fund for, for cryptos. Um, really just described so well the work that I've been learning about waiting for the wire and then figuring out where in the blockchain to put that fiat currency and then which exchange to move it from where to where in order to trade for what. Once you do that, in which wallets do you have to learn how to install and install and, you know, moving all that around. That's kind of like a, it's a real day's labor of kind of trying to think through these things that while they seem simple on the surface can be quite complex. It's helping me understand the prevalence of these um, crypto hedge funds. I mean, I have friends now coming to me saying, hey, you're working in that. Can I put some money with you? And I, my initial response was, well, here, let me show you a wallet. And now, as I understand the complexity of this, I really get like why you would want to give it to your friend to handle for you, at least for the time being. Maybe Prism will change that. Um, next article was uh, a few pieces uh, from Medium, um, A Beginner's Guide to Tezos. Tezos uh, looking to build on what Ether has learned and to develop smarter contracts. Um, there seems to be some real conversation in the space about whether Tezos is a really sincere and intelligent inquiry or whether it's um, kind of a half-baked, half-scheme. So. Still looking into that. Well, no more later, perhaps. And um, I'll jump off of uh, my, my notes are not updated. Um, Coindesk is another place I was turned on to. I'll, I'll mention how in a moment. Um, but really liking what I'm finding coming out of there. Um, their article was State Street to Bitcoin Bull, Blockchain Boss Leaves. To launch crypto startup. I'm talking about a fellow who is leaving a uh, lucrative world of Wall Street to um, create liquidity for um, uh, institutional investors in the blockchain space. And um, that's our resident sir. more on that later. Um, and so that's interesting again. You know, I wonder have thought in the past is 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 Bitcoin, you know, if it's headed to five thousand or fifty thousand or five hundred thousand dollars as various people have surmised, um, is Bitcoin really the currency of institutional exchange in the blockchain sphere? Or will there be such a thing? Or will everybody exchange poly currencies based on their the need or the nature of their activity? More questions than answers, of course. Um, back to Coindesk, um, I was turned on to Coindesk when I listened to a, um, a, a call presented by a publication called The Information, which is a subscription-based news source, which uh, I really like. Very high quality, um, very insightful and informative. And um, they had some really intelligent people on to talk to the other day at 11 o'clock in the morning here, Pacific time. Um, but what really stuck me about the conversation was they spent maybe a half to three quarters of the time interviewing their panelists um, with some really good insights. But then when they opened it up to questions, I was blown away by the caliber of the people in the room on the call um, and the questions that they brought. I mean, professors at Virginia Tech, um, hedge fund managers, um, personal investors, and, uh, you know, MIT, or no, was it, um, 
Columbia University tech graduates and PhDs. And so just really insightful, intelligent conversation if you want to really get your head on, go over, check out the information. Um, so um, a couple of weeks ago, I read an article on uh, why everyone missed the most important invention in the last 500 years um, by a fellow by the name of Daniel Jeffries over on Medium. Um, I think his channel is Hacker Noon or something. Anyway, really interesting introduction to blockchain as uh, triple entry accounting in contrast to single entry and double entry accounting. Double entry having been with us for 600 years now and maybe blockchain represents the next stage in that evolution. So. I, th I thought that was a great article. I've shared it around a lot with friends and interested parties. And today I came back to, uh, to Daniel and, and read his latest piece, Why Everyone Missed the Most Mind-Blowing Feature of Cryptocurrency. Now I won't give away the punchline there. It's, it's a good article and worth the read. Um, but I will suffice it to say, um, it really speaks to the story we're inquiring about how and how radically uh, does the world change through the insights and applications of technology like the blockchain or hollow chain um, and, and perhaps what kind of evolutionary movements are those simply ripples of and what can we see and how can we participate in those collectively uh, to my view it's, it's a dance of reciprocity that we're into, into sharing stories um, with one another learning from each other's stories and, and revisioning a new collective story so um, Daniel Jeffries has uh, something called Deckstack, D-E-C-Stack.com. That is his uh, community place to, to come together and share those stories and creative work. Um, in this case, I think around the blockchain. So after that, we sat and um, discussed uh, where to put some trades. Um, so just to give you all insight into what we're looking at, we were looking at NEM, NEO, OMG, Waves, Wings and SafeX, um, and you know Nem and uh, Neo are are uh, and 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 OMG really Asian contributions. And um, one of the things we're looking at is is tomorrow's eight eight lucky day in the markets in Asia. So maybe that'll bode well. Be some good places to be in today. Um, but also, those are projects that we really like. OMG is Omai's Go's uh, public payment system. I think it has a real good chance of um, mainstreaming the blockchain in a really uh, convenient way and, and have people using it before they know what they're using. Um, Neo, formerly AntShares, I'm excited about that kind of uh, Asia doing their version of Ether. And um, NEM. Um, maybe from the perspective of a clearinghouse of uh, rewards points or, you know, the, re the reward, unused rewards, airline rewards and supermarket rewards and this sort of thing is in the 80 billions or trillions of dollars. I mean, some vast number of untapped wealth that's just sitting in a drawer on a keychain or, you know, miles people aren't flying. Um, this could really liquidate that financial asset into the world and liberate that much more energy uh, for our collective creative endeavors. So that's exciting. And um, so NEM is working on that, and we hope they'll do well. Um, Waves, I know a little bit about that. Um, kind of another version of Ether. I'm just still learning into it. Just put a token investment there and kind of remind us to get back and pay more attention. As for Wings and SafeX, we got into those on the advice of our good friend Vincent Briatore over at the uh, Ethereum Evangelist. And um, I don't know a lot about Wings, but fun, whatever. And SafeX, uh, we got on the, on the Briatore bump there, um, got in too high and looked ugly for a minute, but um, it recovered. And, 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 and as we've leaned into the project more, um, and we don't advise uh, jumping in on, on a tip, but we did. And, you know, it was a way just to put a little stake in the ground and start to find our way to learning around this stuff. 
but SafeX, the uh, Safe Exchange coin, it looks like a, a really good and growing team. They are uh, about to release a wallet and the Chile blockchain, and um, as it turns out, they're a bunch of Serbians. So we got one of those in our mix, and you know, we like the connection. So that's that for trades. So uh, just some questions perhaps to leave you with. Um, while the blockchain phenomenon is indeed global, are there geographic communities acting more prominently overall? Uh, with regards to one token or another, is this true? Uh, what kinds of time patterns might we learn to recognize given the possibilities of these different actors? This really comes in terms of um, trading strategy if we're gonna move money and, and, and grow wealth in that market space. What kinds of things are we going to be paying attention to? Um, if we assume uh, these geographical and cultural distinctions, um, what differences in behavior might uh, we see reflected in the markets from each of those communities? kinds of disciplines, what kinds of profit taking, kinds of uh, movements in alignment with, you know, superstition or astrology might we see, kinds of other factors besides technical or fundamentals, traditional fundamentals analysis might they be taking into account. Um, and uh, regardless of geographic location, what time does the average crypto investor get up and go to work anyway? Love to hear your thoughts on any of these questions or any thoughts on any of this conversation. That's really what we're here to start and participate in. Um, so thanks very much for your attention and we'll see you around.